I'm going to be going through each and every one of these test points here for the A sweep generator in Logic uh, board number four. And most of them, I will say, are not on board four. They're on the main board. And I have, um, I'm not going to flip the page over right now, but I have the positions for all of these. I'm going to move on to number one is test point six. And I'm just going to knock that one out right now. It sits on uh, U506. And while you can't see it on my oscilloscope because it sits a bit high on the uh, screen, you can see the uh, measurement there shows 3.52 to 4.32 right there. And we could see 3.4 to 4.4. And I could I could adjust it down. I looked at it before. It's, it's a nice square wave. And if I put the triggering through it, it stabilizes out. Here we go. I brought it down just so you can have a better look at it. And that's what the waveform looks like. It's a nice square wave. I'm going to say that test point six looks good all the while uh, the, the oscilloscope is, is still acting funny. So uh, this is definitely not the culprit. Six, I'm going to move over to test point seven. This is the sheet that I'm, I'll try and zoom. This is the sheet that I'm using in the book on the other page, just so you have a reference here. This is uh, still on U506. So I'm plugged into test point seven and test point seven looks like it does in the picture. The only thing I noticed about test point seven, and it looks absolutely fine, is that it's not, it, it shows there's a high low type of voltage, but you could see that it starts just like test point six about 3.4 volts off of zero, right? And in the picture, it says that it's just a high low. And I don't know if that really means anything. You would think that it's zero to whatever voltage and it's just some sort of logic. But here we see that it's not the case, that it's always some voltage and then the voltage gets higher. I don't know what to make of that. I figured if that were the case, it would have been annotated in the book. You can see on the next one, test point eight actually specifies that there's a high low voltage. And I don't know why it wasn't specified in this particular one. Here I am on test point eight. And as far as the square wave goes, it looks stable considering that the the pattern is bouncing all over the screen I'm not seeing any problem here that reflects that here test point nine this is a, a hold off gate and it looks exactly as it does again very stable I don't see any issues there skip 10 for now and come back to it because it's on the actual uh, uh, trigger board uh, we're going to go right to 11. We're going to finish all the ones on this board first. Here's number 11 right here. I see a little bit of fluctuation in there. And I don't know if it's the persistency of the scope uh, now and again. But it, it's not matching the fluctuation of, of what's going on here, right? So maybe because I'm, I'm just not... Tell you, like This is bouncing all over the place. And, and I'm not watching this bounce around. So if this were going crazy with that, I, I would say something. And I'm seeing that, that edge slope right there is matching that edge slope right there that little one right in the middle so i mean that doesn't that doesn't look bad at all and it's definitely not unstable like like this mess is right here bouncing all over the place you see that i know it's a little hard to see in the camera but you can see that bouncing so i'm going to say that one is, is okay i'm going to move on number 12 is the top right pin cr503 right here this is test point number 12 i'm on and this is almost like hand drawn right out of the textbook. We could see this um, this square wave, you know, different duty cycle, of course, and that little notch right at the end of the square wave. And if we look in the book, you could see that little notch right there on hold off. It's absolutely perfect, right? And you can see it right there. So I'm gonna say number 12 is good too. And all the while, the oscilloscope uh, display is still flickering, going crazy. 13 is gonna be third up from the bottom on the same IC. We're gonna do that one now. This is test point 13 right here. And I'm seeing 0.9 and um, what is it, around 3.5, which matches the book. I'm, I see a little bit of flutter on this one. I don't know if it means anything, but you could see that the, um, it, it is fluttering a bit, but the flutter is not matching what's going on in the oscilloscope like it like when the oscilloscope goes nuts this is not going nuts with it i don't know if that means anything but i thought it was just worth documenting we could definitely see that this is this is a stable but i just wanted to point that one out it, it's definitely not as profound as what's going on down here 
you know, and, and when this oscilloscope stabilizes, this is still fluttering, so I don't think those two match up. We're going to call that uh, noted but good. I'm really looking for, I'm, lo I'm looking for something that really matches what I'm experiencing here on the oscilloscope, this failure coinciding with what I'm seeing on, on this oscilloscope to narrow it down, right? So, you know, there might be a little quirk here and there or an artifact, but I'm, I'm looking for this. This is what I'm trying to find. 15, way up here on U532. So I'm on, I'm on 15 right now. I don't know what to make of it. I'm seeing um, a high, basically, a DC voltage, 5 volts. And it's showing a, a high to low in, in this particular configuration. I don't know... If that's problematic, I don't know if it's causing my settings, but I know it's not unstable. And when this is working just fine in, in the times where this will go for like a minute and nothing will be wrong, there's there's no change on this. So I don't know if it's an oscilloscope setup, something with the triggering or what have you, but I'm not seeing a problem with that. So here, here's my settings I'm using. I mean, I'm using these exact settings on, on that setup right there. So I don't know exactly what's going on with that one. So I'm going to note that, you know, in this video for, for posterity and move over to 16. And 16 is right here on the same IC. It's the second one over from the right. 16 states to set the uh, channel one coupling to ground. So I have done so for this. I'm set up on the second one. And again, I'm getting a, a positive voltage where or or, or a, uh, a high where I should be getting a low and it's 3.6 volts again there's there's no signal to be seen in this particular instance but I'm not seeing anything that and there's also no triggering either so it's hard to tell with this particular test this is what I got so that's that's 16 last point that we'll come back to is 10 it's next to R707 it's on the timing board itself so I'm going to make that connection now Connection right here, turn the oscilloscope back on its side. And there's the output, and the output seems to reflect what uh, one would find in the uh, book. I'll move over to the book, and there it is, 10. It's a rise and a fall, like a, like a sweep generator almost. Well, probably is a sweep generator. But yeah, so 10 looks good. Uh, based on that information, uh, all of the test points that are in this section appear to be at least okay there's no smoking guns in any of these so that that's going to conclude the testing of a4 the next section i'm going to do is section six and section six shows um the uh test setup as coupled to ground and i'm going to do this as coupled to ground but i'm also going to jump back and forth between that and the one kilohertz uh, waveform because not only am i looking for the normal operating voltages i'm also trying to find a fault so I want to see if there's any fluctuation on these that also matches um, that output that I'm seeing on the oscilloscope. And basically, we could see the um, deflection plates all the way at the end here. I'm hoping at this point, obviously, at this end of the circuit, going to see a problem here on a deflection plate and work that back into these test points to find an actual smoking gun. And that smoking gun will point towards a component and then work that actual trace back until it disappears. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, as it would stand, I'm doing this in number order. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing this in, in some sort of logical flow. So even though, you know, the end point would be at 32 and 33, I'll be starting at 30. And this schematic uh, also points towards multiple boards. This is not like a board six because it's section six. It's a logical section. So the first one is going to be at A4. So actually uh, 30 and 31 are gonna be back on the A4 timing board. Because I have to work on the top of the board, I have to transpose everything. This would be a little more difficult, not very difficult, but at least slightly difficult because I have to read everything upside down and backwards. And you can see here uh, 30 and 31. We can see here the capacitor side. This is actually the front of the unit. And this is pointed towards the back of the unit. We see pretty clearly what this is. It shouldn't be uh, too hard to find out. There's 30, there's 31. We're gonna start with this one first. It, liked, it looks like we may in fact have our first smoking gun and I'm on uh, this what looks like R470 and this is the uh, test point number 30 and we can see the oscilloscope acting in the way that it does and we can see the output reflecting that 
and I'll see what happens if I could get this to um, stabilize, which I'm not going to record because I don't know how to get it to stabilize, but I'll put the movie back up once it is stabilized. So I got it stabilized right now. Oh, it, it just died. And, and I hope that was captured. Here's the funny thing. So this is what it looks like. And, and right now it looks like garbage, right? Let me go to the other side of this potentiometer. So I'm going to move this. I'm gonna look at the device, not the camera. The other side of the pot, absolutely fine. So the incoming signal is fine. This would be real this would be really funny if this was it because I have a previous movie where, where I came to this potentiometer long ago. I'm gonna move back to the other original test portion. And there we are, it's garbage. So I've clamped on the oscilloscope pro between 740 and 741. And that is right here. And now I'm able to um again do what I did earlier and get this over here. I don't I don't know if, if this pot's gonna make it or what. I don't know if it's a cold solder joint. I mean right now, you know, doing what I did, the thing is working fine again. So now now you know I really don't care about the calibration. It's irrelevant to me. And I already have it marked what it was by previous movies. But now I'm working this thing again, but I'm not trying to be gentle with it anymore. And maybe I'll even uh, spray a little bit of, of deoxid on on this thing and not just um, move back and forth get some deoxid in there shut this thing down and see what's what if I can't already it's just a pot you know I ripped this thing out and throw another pot in there but the fact that I saw it garbled on the output and clean on the input shows that it, it, it could be just a case of a bad pot so this requires closer inspection the thing is it's like now look it, it, the thing cleared up I must be close during the retest event, I decided to do some more cleaning and finally take care of this mess, uh, the plate up front, and I'm going to remove this um, anti-glare plate, clean this up. Probably hasn't been cleaned in about 30, 40 years. Maybe do a little detail work here. I've got a couple hours to let this burn, so I might as well. Here's what it looks like without the uh, screen on. Here's the illuminating lights on the bottom. Light up everything. I cleaned up rather nicely considering how it looked. Also got that trigger level knob back on. That means all the knobs have been repaired now. Having localized the point of failure, I'm letting the scope cook at 20 megahertz now. I know you can't see the field tech from here, it's a 20 meg. Um, I'm going to uh, monitor this closely and if this is good, I'm going to call it as far as the troubleshooting event and we're going to move this over to calibration at this point.